Hi, I'm Andy San. I'm the chef of Mainom Restaurant and the new author of Mainom Cookbook. We're going to be doing a couple of recipes combined into one really fun recipe today. We're using a sauce for black pepper crab and we're combining it with the chicken wing today. It's really simple, takes no time at all really. We got black pepper for black pepper sauce obviously, but I also have white pepper. And notice I really like to keep my, uh, my peppercorns fresh and in the fridge uh, when I'm not using them and I always, always use whole peppercorns. To start with um, making this sauce, we want to be toasting this. So we're going to do uh, about six tablespoons of black pepper and about two of that of white pepper. The black pepper is, is that rich, heavy flavor and the white pepper gives it a light nuttiness. The trick is when you're toasting spices to not blast it on high heat. You know, we want to go on medium to low heat to really slowly release the essential oils. So as I'm toasting, I'm just slowly kind of tossing it. You don't want to play around with it too much. It's nice to just move it around and you'll notice that there's going to be a little bit of shine coming out. That's the essential oils coming through. So I like to say cook with your senses. I think Asian cooking has always been more intuitive. So, you know, look at it, smell it, you know, like let that tell you if it's ready. You start to smell the, the combination of black and white peppers. Now I want to take this a little bit further, but I don't want to toast it all the way into my in my pan because this is the secret. The biggest difference between a Singaporean black pepper sauce is the butter. So right here I have about a third of a cup. So I just want to break that down a little bit. So I'm going to add that in and slowly cook that with my butter. And that butter is going to give the uh, flavor and the richness to what people love about Singaporean black pepper sauce. Right now we're just going to go low temperature for about another five minutes or so, just really bring out the flavor. Now you can smell the combination of the butter and, and, and the pepper. While that's going right now, we're gonna start pounding a paste. I like to do it in a, in a traditional modern pesto. And when you do modern pestos, I always prefer to use the stone ones. But we're gonna make a paste with uh, three cloves of garlic, probably about two or three Thai chilies. If you don't have Thai chilies available or, or in your fridge, uh, it's an optional ingredient because there is going to be a lot of heat coming from the pepper already. Um, the chilies obviously provide a sharper type of heat. Okay, so we're going to start with the garlic. Now, whenever you're pounding things uh, in the modern pesto, I always put a bit of poor salt, or just in this case, sea salt from, uh, from Newfoundland. Put a pinch in there because it's like the sandpaper. It's the grit that breaks everything apart, okay? Uh, chilies as well. I, I even like to use the stems of the chili because they have really nice flavor. As you're pounding your paste, you want to be careful not to be too curious with your eyes and stick your face so close to the modern pesto because you might get a chili in there. So I always kind of do it, have a hand slightly covered and pounding this is not up and down, it's not grinding, it's a combination. So you want to strike your bowl on one side and having it grind in another side and, and it's all in just the wrist. As my paste is ready, I'm going to take this out our pepper in the butter is, is, uh, is ready. We're gonna let that cool for a couple of uh, seconds here, and we're gonna add that into the modern pesto and ground. I always like to separate the wet things from the dry things. Uh, that way there's no splatter. So I'm always gonna kick out the peppercorns first. So in here again, we're just gonna pan this. And what you notice, you're not gonna really get ground pepper. It's gonna turn into a bit of a, a pepper paste. It smells amazing actually. So you want to do this until there's no visible whole peppercorns, like that. Now, how fine or how coarse you want to leave, that really depends on you. And I personally like a little bit of texture in, in the sauce, so I'm going to leave it as this. Now we're going to put the butter back in and just kind of emulsify it back into a paste. And now I'm kind of using a grinding motion to just make sure I got all the big chunks out of the way. We're going to cook the garlic and chili paste in the pan. Let's go on medium heat. We're gonna use a little bit of oil and you wanna fry the garlic and chili until it's aromatic so you can smell the chilies and the garlic. So already that's producing a lot of really beautiful aromas. We don't wanna take this too far because we don't wanna dry out the garlic which will make the sauce bitter because of all the black peppercorns inside. So right about there, we're going to add all of the peppercorns and butter. So to season now, we're gonna use some chicken stock, some oyster sauce, some fish sauce, and some sugar. I actually don't have sugar uh, here at home, so I, I, I have some sugar cubes that I use to make uh, Manhattan's with. I'm gonna add the, the chicken sauce first, probably half of this, which is half cup. That way, when the fish sauce and the oyster sauce hit the pan, it doesn't evaporate. A little bit more for evaporation. Some oyster sauce. I'm gonna say three to four tablespoons worth. Uh, about two tablespoons of uh, fish sauce. I'm gonna do uh, three sugar cubes in there, probably about a tablespoon's worth. If you find the sauce a bit spicy, you can add a little bit more sugar. 
to balance everything out. Just make sure you break apart the sugar cakes. The sugar is not only there for sweetness and balance, it's actually there for richness as well. So I think we could use another sugar cube just to kind of balance off everything. And I'm also going to add a little bit more chicken stock to uh, open it up a little bit more. An optional thing in, in this sauce is uh, cornstarch. Um, because the butter tends to separate uh, from the, the rest of the sauce, I put a touch of slurry in there just to tie everything together. A teaspoon's worth and enough water to make that into a slurry. In this case, my slurry is quite loose. Uh, I don't want it to be a thick sauce, so start with half of it, a little bit more, and I think that's good. So again, you want a nice thick sauce. Your butter is going to separate a little bit, that's totally okay. So there you have it, that's the black pepper sauce. Super easy to make, you can keep it in the fridge, it has a pretty good shelf life. It's great with uh, you know any kind of red meat or chicken, uh, it's really good with anything. Okay, so next we're going to make the, the fried chicken wing part of this uh, dish. You want to set up your pot with some oil, and you never really want to fill your pot more than half full. because. Uh, you know, frying when all the items goes in, the oil will expand, it can make it a mess and it'd be quite dangerous. You use canola oil, peanut oil, uh, whatever you like to fry with. We're just gonna add enough water to the, the cornstarch. So you just wanna break apart the cornstarch with the water and what you want is to make sure your slurry is not too thick and it's basically whole milk consistency. You want a really light slurry so that it's a really light, crispy, thin, paper thin layer on, on, on the chicken wing. A lot of people like to fry with cornstarch, just dust it with the items they're frying. What I find is that cornstarch end up just falling off into the oil and everything tastes burnt. So what I like to do is the, the, the slurry evenly coats everything and you don't have a thick layer on it. So all we need to do is get the chicken wings ready. I have here two pounds of chicken wings. So before it goes into the slurry, I like to kind of season my wings a little bit with just salt. Don't need to go crazy because the, the, the black pepper sauce is well seasoned, so uh, keep in mind that. So I'm going to add the chicken in here. Notice as it comes out, it's barely coating the wings and that's what you want. That's enough to create a really, really crispy coating. As the wings are ready and coated, we're going to fry them in 350 degrees. What I like to do is I like to take my temperature up a little bit to 365. That way when, when everything hits in, when all the items go in there, it'll drop down to where I want it to be. Don't drop too many at once. One at a time. Have a plate with paper towel ready, some tongs, and some sort of spider thing to fish out the, the wings if you like. Move them around a little bit. I'm just stirring it a little bit to make sure they're not sticking to each other. They'll tend to want to do that a little bit. But seven minutes for kind of the average chicken wing. If you have ginormous uh, chicken wings on steroids, you might need to add a couple minutes to that. They're not only light and golden, the, the, the batter on it is super thin and crispy four or five tablespoons of the sauce we made. Just enough to make sure all our wings are, are, are well coated. Put that on the side there. And let's do a little bit of uh, cilantro. And there you go, that's the uh, hybrid version of chicken wing and black pepper crab together is fried chicken wings with black pepper sauce. So it's one of my favorite snacks. And I think next time, if you're watching a football game or a basketball game, so the, the typical wings, you can give this a try. Well, oh, the lime smells so good on the black pepper. Mm. It's gonna get messy though. I love it. You really need the lime because it balances everything and gives your palate a bit of a, a rest because the, the peppers are quite rich. I personally like to leave the peppercorns a little coarser so you can get the bite and the texture. And again, please use whole peppercorns. It's really, really essential for this. It's really delicious and I hope you guys enjoy it.